My name is Austin Weichel, and I'm a bronze sculpture artist. So I was looking around your website, and all your work's amazing and a uh, lot of detail. How did you get into this? Um, well, it really to go back and start uh, everything is uh, going through school, found out I was dyslexic, and I really attached myself to artwork. That was my outlet. And from there, went to Prescott, Arizona, where my grandparents used to live, and they have a few bronze uh, foundries or a uh, main one in Prescott Valley. And we went through the whole process, how they take an artist creation and uh, turn it into bronze. And so the guy gave me a piece of clay, the same kind of clay I use today. And then from there, um, started my first sculpture out with a fork and a knife of a firefighter on 9-11. Didn't have any photos or anything like that. Um, and put a ton of detail into it. And then about a six, nine months later, uh, went back to the bronze foundry and he bronzed one for me, one for my grandparents and one for himself. And then that kind of started the whole thing of me just kind of playing around with it. And yeah. then right when I graduated high school, got my first commission uh, for the Windsor Severance Fire Department uh, here in Colorado. And then it just kind of snowballed effect into more and more monuments. So can you tell me a little bit about the process from concept to creation? Sure. Um so when a client reaches out to me and they have a vision, um, let's say it's a, a, a firefighter um, and they don't know exactly what they want as pose wise or anything, or if they do know exactly what they want, that's even easier. Um, but we kind of talk back and forth a few meetings and we figure out what their uh, main kind of focus is. What do people want to see and feel? when they go up to the monument or memorial or tribute sculpture. And so from that conceptual idea, then I start a, a sketch or some photos, I uh, give them uh, the timeline and all those details of that. And then I start the process. And when I started the process, I started out of clay that you see behind me. Yeah. That clay never dries. Um, and so I keep on reworking it, putting all the detail into it with uh, different little rakes and tools either I make or that I buy. And from there, I send videos and photos off to the client. Then they approve or have any minor changes to it. Then from that, um, they say, Austin, it looks great. Let's go to the next step. And I have a mold maker that comes over and cuts up the sculpture. So right here, you can see a horse's head. Yeah. And that is the Special Forces 10th or 10th Special Forces group in Colorado Springs. That monument is when it was installed about 16 feet tall. And so you can't see it here, but that was one of their cut lines uh, for the mold making. So they put a mold on something on one side and the other. They put a shell on it, they break that mold apart, they pour wax in there. Um, and it goes through the lost wax casting process that takes at least a few months to about six months, depending on how large the monument is. So then after that, then um, once there's about like 30 to 35 people that work at the bronze foundry, so they all touch my work. Um, and so they get all those parts welded all back together after it's been bronzed at 2000 degrees. And once that is complete, they weld it all back together, make it look like it's never been welded before. So they put my same textures in there and everything. Then the coloring stage is one of the coolest things, um, uh, next to them pouring the bronze and, the coloring is they heat up with a torch. It opens the pores of the metal just enough. Different acids and acrylics then will be put or applied onto the metal. It traps it in just enough versus a car paint that it lays on top of it, oh, right? Okay. Um, and in that way, you can have bronze kind of pull through and have shine. Um, and that's what I like to pull through with my monuments that they have color to them, but you still see the pull through of bronze. And what that is is that gold. So you, if you see a shined up gold, that's where I shined up the bronze. Um, and then the color is almost like a mist to it. So that takes a few days to kind of go through the process and that cures for about a day or two with the lacquer. Um, and then I bring it out or ship it out to my clients and they install it. So if so. you also are a first responder, how mm -hmm. is it, you know, also creating first responder memorials, taking your own experiences into it? Yeah, it's um, 
You know, the fire department has been a part of my life since I was about 13, 14 years old. So I started as a student firefighter for the Loveland Fire Department um, here in Colorado. And then from there, I went to another department and then landed into uh, Windsor Severance Fire Rescue. And so I didn't become a certified firefighter until, you know, at age 18 uh, yeah. for the volunteer side. And um Taking those calls and interactions with all the guys and and putting into my work. So all my work is self-taught. Like I didn't go to art school. I didn't do all that stuff. So it's a little bit different because it's me. It's completely me. Um, it's not uh, I didn't learn it through another artist that has a certain technique. Um, and from uh, the artwork and also the fireside. What I have taught myself, though, too, and I've always been a part of is never giving up. Yeah. And it's really easy to just kind of like throw in the towel a lot of times. Um, and where I bring that in is like the details. So when we look at a scene, let's say it's a house fire, you know, car fire, whatever it is. We want to focus in on what is the issue. Right. But we also want to see what else is going around us. And with my work. I want to do that too. So you have the main focus of the monument and you then you have hyper realism detail of the sculpture. So I have a small sculpture right here that's tabletop. It, this is uh, tools of the trade. So you can't really see it. It's kind of dark in here, but um, okay. you just see a lot of detail and everything though too, just based on something that's going to be tabletop size. Uh, the bigger monuments definitely have more detail. Um, so that's the cool thing about these monuments that I create is um, I'm able to capture the spirit of, let's say, the fire department, police department, or military, because I have a taste, as in with the fire department side and the camaraderie that we have, um, that I can actually push into the work itself. So that's what I really love to do and, and why I create my work. So how important is emotion with creating these uh, uh, sculptures? Yeah, you know, emotion, creating emotion into artwork is one of the hardest things. Yeah. Um, because you're trying to capture a moment in time. And that moment in time is a slight movement, a slight wrinkle in the pants, a uh, slight facial expression. Um, although that... So let's just talk about the face, you know, um, everyone's face is different. Everyone has their own unique look, um, and in their mannerisms and everything else too. But we all know what a face is supposed to look like. That's the thing. Isn't that weird? It, so with that, capturing the moment in time is like a, sli a slight, like, um, worrisome look, uh, it could be, um, Let's take the Nevada State Firefighter Memorial. Now they have masks on, but the only thing I can play with is the eyes. Because when we walk up to each other, our mask is not just solid. We can't see your eyes. We can actually right. see each other's eyes. But it's just this, right? So you're trying to capture as much motion there. And it's not like making it too uh, cartoony or anything like that. Right. You're to those fine lines, those kind of like when somebody smiles, they kind of like squint their eyes, things like that. Um, and then let's say it's just a firefighter just standing there. There's still going to be movement within the gear. There's still going to be movement within everything. So capturing that does take time. So you, I'll build up a sculpture like this. This is like 50% uh, larger than life. Um, then after that, then it takes a long time to do the fine details. It's easy to build up. Oh, okay. It takes time is the actual perfection of the skill. Um, just like in the fire department. So when you're going to be forcing that door and stuff, yeah, you could force a door and blow out the frame pretty easily. But how do you force a door in a way that you can still lock it or that you can still shut it? So that's another kind of tie that I do with my artwork is, is pulling those kind of two things together. And that's so important for that stuff because, yeah. you know, it's going to be around forever. Yeah. And 
it means something to each fire department or even the smaller things. What yeah. is some of the feedback you've gotten from either veterans or uh, first responders from your work? So I, I, a while ago, I kind of was sitting back at a, um, an installation and just wanted to like view everybody. And what I, I tell people is I live for three seconds. And what that is, that three seconds is right when they take off uh, the tarp from the sculpture and they unveil it. There's a moment of split silence and you have a gasp. And then some people have massive emotion and they cry or they have massive emotion that they want to go up and touch it. Um, and those emotions, it's really hard to like capture words yeah. for such emotions, right? It's kind of like explaining color. How do you explain color to somebody, right? And so emotions sometimes are so powerful. Like for me, like when there's something really emotional, I might be just like stone cold on the outside because I just don't know how to communicate that even physically sometimes, right? So let's take the Special Forces Monument. And with that one, when they dedicated it, you have these families that are walking up gold star families that they lost their father. Um, and I just, you could just tell that they're just so happy, but they're sad. Yeah. But they're, and then the mothers and the fellow, um, you know, military members, it's a sense of pride, you know, because this is them. That's the, this is them. And so I want to, best replicate who they are into every single sculpture. That's what's going to be powerful is so with the special forces monument, that was, there's a lot of secret things with it. Um, but some of them I can share is a lot of the guys actually went to war. Um, actually all of them uh, that I had up to the studio, there's about 15 to 17 and they were able to actually sculpt the sculpture too. And so for them to actually go to war um, and come back to the States and it's almost like therapy to them. Right. They're able to actually put their own fingerprints in it. And then I also had um, some other people put their fingerprints in it. So you can see uh, that that will actually pull through the bronze. So now their legacy is now forever in a piece of work. It's not just me, it's them. And that's, I'm just the channel between those two things. That's what I see. Of all the things you've created, what are some things that you want to sculpt that you haven't yet? Mm. Oh, that's a tough one. It's a tough one because there's so many, right? right. Um, <laughs> there, there would be... There's just one monument that's out there that I've just been really wanting to do, but I just can't say it right now. Um, but <laughs> it uh, makes yeah, sense. It's, yeah. uh, it's like another <laughs> secret thing. But um, there's a lot of ones that... When we, as in the fire department or emergency services or even business owners, anybody, right? A lot of people, I wouldn't say anybody, you want to leave a legacy behind. And what my purpose is, is to have that channel. And while I'm kind of laying pieces of my legacy, I'm capturing everyone else's legacy, though, too, and capturing that. And so I would say monuments that I haven't done yet be just bigger ones, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, like a lot more bigger, uh, like sculptures and everything and ones that really mean something. So I brought the special forces monument up a few times and that one is very close to my heart. Um, and so more monuments like that, just the mass of it and have other people being a part of it. Um, there's one thing is that it's just one individual that's coming to me that they have 
a big dream and they want to just do this for them. Okay, that's just for them. But what about everybody else? And that's the monuments that I absolutely love is when more people have a hand into it. Um, and it's and it's part of their story. So things like that. So earlier you said about uh, growing up being dyslexic. I grew up with uh, learning disabilities all in the classes. How important is it to you to show off that, you know, people with dyslexia have are way creative other ways? Yeah. You know, I think that we all have every single person has something to give um, to the world or somebody. And what that is, it could be, you know, a mom or it could be somebody else uh, that just loves a lot of people just need that, you know, and that's how they can give uh, happiness to other people. Um, and so, I mean, that's a hard question because my mind just kind of going a little bit nuts. It's, it's, uh, it, it's so important to me that showing other people that, just because you might have struggled, that you could have lessened something else in your life, but you gained so much more. And so when I go back to somebody that struggled, because we all need a little struggle in life. Um, right. Because everything, if any, if everything's too easy, then life to me is kind of boring. I think that, you know, pushing the envelope and everything and showing that you can do it because our minds are saying, you know, are kind of primal in, in a way of, we always want to say, Oh no, we can't do it. Oh, that's for that. Or everything like that. And showing everybody else that, Hey, I came from some lows, not the deepest lows and, and everything, but I used it to my advantage yeah. and i still have issues today of like reading emails or you know different things or contracts but i'm able to give something else to people and so it could be that person that has you know that love for other people um it could be a you know a lot of business owners are dyslexic uh, a lot of uh millionaires are dyslexic a lot of um you know, uh, other people have other disabilities. They can bring so much to people. Yeah. So I think that's, it's a, it's a great thing to actually have, you know, some struggles in life. And, um, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm very fortunate for, um, those things I've had and the people that are on my side really to, to try to bring me up. How can people reach out to you? So, uh, you can go on my website. It's Austin Weichel, W-E-I-S-H-E-L uh, dot com. Uh, you can email me at info at Austin uh, Or you can follow me on Instagram and Facebook, same name. Um, and also uh, my company is Honorable Sculptures. So I honor those. Um, so Honorable Sculptures dot com as well. So playing around uh, with that as you can see all my new artwork on Instagram. I'm really uh, on that stuff. A little bit of LinkedIn, though, too but where you could really find the latest and greatest stuff is going to be on my Instagram.